Hey, it's Sunday, so it's uh, my weekly webinar. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I just want to say a big thank you, firstly, to everyone who watched last week. I had record numbers uh, for viewings, which is very exciting for me. Um, record number of likes as well. So I'm very grateful to you. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, so you get automatic notifications of when my webinars are released, then you can watch them straight away. There's no time to waste it, is there, in financial markets? You want to be ready for Monday or ready for Sunday night opening. Please like, share, subscribe. Uh, that really helps me out. I'm hoping to keep boosting these numbers. Uh, it's very encouraging for me. Uh, I, I did an interview with Etienne Cret at Desire to Trade. I don't know if you've seen it. It's had like 20,000 or 21,000 views. So that is massive for me. Very excited about that. I'll put the link in the description box below in case you haven't seen it. I'll also put a link in for my website uh, where you can get a free mentor session with me if you want to book it up. If I can help you with anything, any problems with your trading, with your analysis, anything I can do, it's all free. Uh, have a look for a link in there as well. And there's also going to be a descri um, um, in something in the description box giving you an opportunity to get my uh, subscription for free. Uh, just open an account with uh, my, my recommended broker, deposit some funds, I get paid a commission by the broker, and you get all my services absolutely free. Saves you £200 a month, uh, £2,500 a year. Massive saving. It's a, it's a real special deal. So please do have a look at that. Right, on with the analysis. So last week I made some very bold calls. I uh, suggested that the dollar had topped after a very long uh, bull run. I suggested that bond yields had topped after a very long bull run. And I suggested that, uh, what else did I suggest? I think I suggested that the yen would continue to weaken. I got that wrong. So we're going to have a look at that. Um, oh yeah, the other big call was I suggested that the stock markets, in particular in the US, had bottomed, they would recover, and maybe even see a, a strong rally through the summer. So uh, I think three out of four ain't bad. Uh, if the yen uh, was a little bit tricky, we'll go into that later, but the dollar definitely peaked. Uh, we didn't see much of a sell-off, as you can see from the daily chart. We really just traded sideways. Uh, but if I go to my weekly chart, just to remind you of the big... Actually, do you know what? I need to actually go to a... Yeah, I'm going to go to a yearly chart. That's what I'm going to go to. If you didn't see my webinar last week, this was my argument for the peak in the dollar. I had to go to the yearly chart. Last week was really a lot of, a lot of emphasis in why you have to look at longer term charts. Uh, and this goes back to 1985, 38.2% uh, FIB at 106.60, not that far above where we peaked, only about 80 pips. So uh, the yearly chart's a bit of a mess there, but that's the reason uh, that I suggested that the dollar would peak. Weekly chart, we had a doji candle, we're near on a doji candle, nothing particularly negative, uh, but we did get something of a doji again, a red body doji on the weekly candle. So it looks like the dollar is trading sideways to consolidate the recent gains. There is no sell signal as such. Uh, and for that reason, I think that we'll probably consolidate and trade sideways for a little bit longer. I'll see if there's a pattern that builds that would suggest negativity. But for, but for now, my call that the dollar has peaked has certainly uh, come uh, come to come into play uh we've got some support down here in the dollar index at around the 103 and a half area and we saw them sort of trading in between the 103 and a half area and the peak at 10 uh, 105.78 we didn't get anywhere near that peak this week of course the the the, the high for this week was one just below 105 double o so really holding um sorry 10 uh, just below 105 double o so holding almost 100 pips below the peak anyway fits in with what i'm suggesting that the dollar has peaked but there's no sell signal, so I'm just waiting for further developments. Now, the euro was, was, was uh, one pair that I really mentioned, because, of course, if the dollar is going to weaken or at least stabilize, then the euro will, will stabilize against the dollar and may even increase in value against the US dollar. Now, not again, not, not much of an increase in, uh, in the euro dollar. We crept up to the first resistance level. Now, if you're a subscriber, you'll know all about that uh, resistance level that I've got. And you can see from my Fibonacci levels and from my trend lines in the euro versus US dollar, we've got support, uh, resistance rather, strong resistance around 106.20, 106.30. That's the key resistance level for the week. And that comes down to a trend line, a 50-day moving average and a Fibonacci level, which is uh, uh, lending weight to that area. So we're really going to have to get up through 106.50 this week in the euro versus the US dollar. That will clear this resistance area and should see that pair surge. Now, um, I've got targets on my report for you this week uh, if you're a subscriber. Uh, otherwise, we'll look into that again next week in my weekly webinar. Oh yes, one of the reasons that I suggested that the euro would benefit from uh, 
from the dollar peaking is this double bottom pattern, which I haven't, which is not uh, the case in all the dollar pairs, but the euro in particular looks like it will eventually uh, break higher. I do think we are base building here, so definitely watch that resistance level that I mentioned and see if that double bottom comes into play and that does propel the market up towards well eventually 10800 that would be a reasonable target so uh, that would give us well from where we are that would give us a 250 pip rally but of course we need to get through uh, through 10650 to confirm that and then we can push up towards 10800 now a less convincing potential double bottom in the Aussie dollar i'm not really as convinced as i am in the euro but i still think that this could be a base building exercise and the fact that even we're just breaking above this very short term trend line, well, by Friday close we did, gives me some reason to believe that the Aussie can start to build a recovery against the US dollar as well. Now, actually, I like this New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar pattern. This is a, a, a pretty relevant uh, double, potential double bottom. I would have liked to have seen more bullish candles at each, at each low point. I would have liked to have seen something like a bearish engulfing or some sort of hammer Something a little bit more positive. This, this is almost a bearish, a bullish engulfing candle, I should say. Not bearish, a bullish engulfing candle. Uh, anyway, well, I could, I could probably draw a trend line on here. But again, there are reasons to believe that this market can recover the New Zealand and Kiwi versus the US. Uh, we're getting a little bit of a peak above that trend line there. So yeah, reasons for optimism, uh, reasons to believe that we can get something of a recovery on the weekly chart. Uh, if I just scrunch this up a bit, there we go. The double chart, the double bottom, you can see it there. A slightly, well, a doji candle. It's not a bullish candle, but it does in, at least indicate stability. So again, another doji there. So there are good reasons to suggest that this, uh, that this can recover, this New Zealand dollar against the US dollar can recover. And that, again, obviously ties in quite nicely with what I'm thinking uh, for the dollar index chart. Now, also, if you watched last week's weekend webinar, blimey, that's a mouthful, um, um, then you'll know that in the Canadian dollar versus the US dollar, I suggested that there would be a peak. Now, you know, this isn't, this isn't genius. It's just purely a case of looking at the upper trend line of the channel that we've been uh, developing ever since, where is this? 2021, August 2021. So we're getting on for a 10-month channel. Um, and well, it's very, very well pronounced with the trend lines, isn't it? So it wasn't a huge surprise to see the market, to see the, the US dollar come lower against the Canadian dollar played out as I suggested. Nice big resistance level up 130.60, 130.80, which we didn't quite hit this week. We just, we, we consolidated a little bit and then the big plunge on Friday suggests that I think I'm right on this and I think we are gonna see further weakness in the US versus the Canadian. Gold has been boring and tricky. Well, I say tricky because, you know, I, I really don't like this kind of pattern. I can't trade this uh, up for a day or two, down for a day or two, rever reversing. You can't hold a position for long. You certainly can't hold a position overnight. Then you get some big engulfing candle. And you think, oh, here we go. The market's going to break to the downside. And before you know what, we've got a strong recovery and we've made back almost all of, well, more than half of the losses. This doesn't work for me. I've, uh, this, this, if it works for you, if you're a scalper, if you're in and out trading the sideways range, Fantastic. The 200 day moving average was offering something of a support level here, and then it's completely broken down here and it's not been a reliable level at all. If you've been following me for a while, you will know that my theory on precious metals, gold in particular, is that it is not an inflation hedge, that gold will not increase in value uh, as inflation rises, as interest rates rise. And, and I have been proved right because look, when you go back to uh, where is this now? That's March uh, of this year, and way before March, I was saying that gold you know, will not do well in this uh, uh, high inflation environment. Uh, and we, we've just uh, gone down since then. The, I do think this is a bit, beginning of a bear trend. You may be bored of hearing this if you've been following me for a while, but look at this double top pattern on the weekly chart. It's really clear. I won't go into it again. I'm sure you've heard it from me before. Uh, this double pop, uh, top pattern in gold looks negative to me. Eventually, I think we will break down. Uh, I'm surprised we didn't we haven't already, to be honest, but it looks like we have, we're coming to the apex of this triangle pattern here. You can see with the white trend lines. So eventually we will break and I think it will be to the downside. But until then, it's basically trade the range, trade the trend lines until we break. And then when we do get the break, we should get a pretty extended move. So if we can jump on this move in time, it should be a really nice swing trade that we can run for a few days. Who knows, maybe even a couple of weeks. And I think there'll be a few hundred 
point in that one. So stay tuned with that one, please. Now, oil. Um, if you followed me, you'll know that I called a top in oil here, and this worked really quite well. Uh, even better than I thought, actually. Oil fell really quite dramatically, and I couldn't, well, it was the bearish engulfing candle here that really gave it away for me. I would have liked it if it was a double top. Anyway, if you if you were there with me last week and you were watching this, uh, you'll, you'll not be surprised to see oil drop. Now, having said that, oil has fooled me because on Wednesday, well, we broke down what we held above what is a very important support level around 105.00104.50 by Thursday we were closing below it and, and most of Friday we just couldn't get above there and I thought right and I, and I said to my subscribers holding below 104.50 105.00 it's very negative and, it, and we're probably going to plunge next week uh, you know a good a good 400 500 600 pips or ticks I should say pips a measure of, of, of FX markets now, um, it didn't happen. Friday, we've burst back up through this level. So it does look like oil will push higher this week. I'm not going to say any more. Basically, we hold above 105.00. It looks positive. We start breaking below 104.00 and it looks quite negative for oil. Right, bear with me here because I'm coming up to the education bit where I'm going to show you a little bit about how to trade sideways markets and, and looking at some short-term charts and how the moving averages are going to work, how they can really help you find some good support and resistance levels. I talked excuse me, I talked a little bit um, earlier about how I, in gold, how I don't like that market when it's up one day, uh, day, up for a day or two, down for a day or two. But there are ways that you can trade that if you want to be active, if you can sit in front of a screen and follow the shorter term charts. So stay with me. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, it doesn't work for me particularly because I don't like sitting in front of a screen all day. Uh, the strategies that I develop are basically what I call set and forget. So for my subscribers, I give them a cheat sheet and they can put in the, um, the orders and leave them and then see during the day if, if, any execution, if, if any orders have been executed and then the stop is already in, the target is already in and, and it's just kind of leave it alone. And I don't actually encourage people to sit in front of the screen all day because the market plays tricks, with, tr tricks on you and your mind plays tricks on you. You, you kind of talk yourself out of a position when you really shouldn't. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll go, go on to that in a minute. Uh, stock markets. I called US stock markets higher last week. I showed you how the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones had hit big support levels or had, the NASDAQ had held just above, the Dow Jones had hit it and bounced. And so even though the chart for the S&P was looking pretty negative to me, and if I was only looking at the chart for the S&P, you might remember this, I would have said to you, we're going to 3,500. Well, because I was looking at other charts that showed that the US stock markets were probably going to bounce, I suggested that the S&P would rally. And what a rally we had. It took a while. It was slow to start in the week. But we went from 36.60 up to 39.19. Uh, so, you know, a, a, real, a real good push higher there. Um, hitting targets later on in the week, as I say, took a bit of a while to get going. In fact, it was really only Thursday and Friday where we really saw the gain. So you had to um, hang on to your hat there and, and be very patient. Okay, we've got as far as the 23.6% Fib at 39.15, bang on target, 39.19. Now, a good close, a close at the high of the week, a close at the high of the day, a close bang on the 23.6% Fib really. So watch that sort of 39.10, 39.20 area in the September futures for the E-mini S&P. It's gonna be very crucial this week. In fact, that's pretty much the only level of importance. If we dip back, well, I'll give you some support levels on the on the analysis um, if you're subscribing. And if, you, if you're not subscribing, well, just watch that level, basically. We hold below 39.10. It's, it's not going to be very positive. We break above 39.20. It's going to be a lot more positive. I fancy a move to the upside eventually. We may stall there. We may pull back a little bit. But eventually, I think these stock markets can keep going higher. Now, I'm only talking short term. Fundamentals and lots of other things, longer term charts, do indicate that eventually the stock markets will tumble, tumble significantly. And I think the lows that we have seen will break eventually. But for the summer, I just think there's going to be a bit of a short squeeze. Maybe the market's got a little bit ahead of themselves on the downside and uh, it's time for a recovery. You know, a lot of people are looking at the stock market, as I said last week, and thinking this is cheap. We've fallen a lot. Time for me to jump in. And they're feeling uh, like this is a time to invest. Uh, so, and I, and I think you know this this will re will continue. We will continue to get some decent recovery in stock markets. What can I talk to you about the Nasdaq? Okay, the big support for me was at 10,800, 10,700. I said that to you last week. I also said to you we may not get that low. 
the buyers, the investors who think we, who think it's cheap, just might come in a little bit early. I said, I, I said, I hope we get a spike down to ten eight hundred. I said we could get a spike down to ten six hundred. You know, just to shake out some longs, and then the market turns around and goes up. You know how that works. You're in. You know you're in at a good level, but the market just does something to shake you out, and it really it really makes it difficult for you. Well, it didn't happen in this case. In this case, we bottomed just above eleven thousand, just above the big ten eight hundred support level, and we've bounced back significantly. So as I say. I think this rally has got legs. Now, looking at the daily chart, where can we get to? Again, I'm just using fib levels. Very simple. 12,389 is the 38.2%, uh, sorry, is the 23.6% fib of the whole move down from the peak at the end of December. Did you say December? No. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take it. Well, the peak was uh, 16,767, but really the, the drop did not start until the 28th of December. So we've fallen uh, very significantly from there. Uh, we've fallen over 6,000 points. Uh, we've got a, now a good recovery. We've got a little bit oversold on the daily chart. And I think we are heading back up to 12,350, 12,450. That's going to be my big resistance level of the week. So watch that carefully. We'll have a look at that again next week in the webinar. Now, the real beauty was the mini Dow, Dow Jones. This, this was just textbook perfect. 23.6% Fib and the previous swing high, the COVID swing high, the, all, the previous all time high, uh, which came in at 29,500. Uh, we have the 23.6% uh, Fib. Uh, when you take the low, let me just show you exactly where that came from. You take the uh, global financial crisis crash low in 2009. I think that was uh, March 2009, wasn't it? Yeah, I remember being, I was, I was I've been trading since 1987. So I've seen all of this, um, even, even by the time this crash happened. I'd already been trading for 20 years. I remember watching this in Dubai. Okay, uh, the, the global financial crash low uh, in March of 2009 at 6,460. I've projected my FIB levels from there up to the peak that we saw at the beginning of the year or the end of last year. And I've got a 23.6% FIB around uh, 29,664. Not around, that's the exact value. And I've taken a second set of FIBs from the COVID crash low which just happened to end up but don't forget we didn't know at the time because we hadn't reached the all-time high we didn't know that eighteen thousand would end up be also being the 61.8 percent fib it's amazing how this happens all the time these markets are so mathematical i don't know how it all works but i see these things line up all the time and this is another reason why I, I was quite convinced that this was the peak for the dow jones just because the way these levels lined up i thought hang on this is telling me that there is, that this is a peak you know, there's, everything just matches up perfectly. We have to come down. Well, we did come down. And we've come down to the 23.6% FIB and the 38.2% FIB when you take the second set of FIB levels from that COVID crash low, which, as, as I said, just happens to be around 61.8. And that happens all the time, all the time. Um, now, we bounce right off there. What was the low? 29,741. Okay, 80, 80 ticks above that 23.6% uh, FIB. That's pretty accurate to me. There's your monthly chart. Now, from the daily chart, I think we can still recover. In fact, this market is just beating the 23.6% FIB from the short-term chart, or from the daily chart anyway, uh, from, uh, just lining up the peak, uh, the all-time high, down to that, uh, I'm going to call it the crash low, because it has been a crash, isn't it, this year? We really have had a big dump. Now, strong recovery, exactly as I predicted. Took a while for it to take off. We've now closed above the 23.6% FIB for the Dow Jones, which was at 31,400. We got to 31,487. So we're just peaking above it. We've closed at the high of the week. We've closed at the high of the day. Looks really good. Big green candle, nice bear trap. Shorts are getting squeezed. And I think that this rally has got legs. So if you jumped into a long, oh, we've also filled a gap that we had back uh, uh, in, on the 10th of June. There was a little opening gap there, and you don't see those very often because these uh, stock markets uh, don't close for long. That's probably yeah, that was a weekend. That was um, that was that was beautiful actually. Look, when you get a gap like this, if you don't know about this, pay attention. When you get well, this, I think this must have been a Sunday close. What was that? That was the tenth, and this must have been uh, sorry, a Friday close, and this must have been a Sunday night, Monday open. Yeah, it was. Now, when when you've got a big red candle like that, and you get a, a, an open after a weekend a gap lower, that's telling you that this market's going to dump. That's a breakaway gap. If you don't know about them, look them up. Breakaway gaps. When the market's tumbling, close at the low of the week, close at the low of the day, and then 
the beginning of the next, uh, you know, of the next session on the Sunday night or the Monday morning, we have a gap uh, that is a breakaway gap, and it's, it's unlikely that gap that, that gap is going to get filled. It means that sellers are so keen to get, you know, the, I don't know whether they're stop loss orders or new shorts, but the sellers are so um, keen to get into the short position or get out of their long position that they're willing to accept a lower price uh, to trade at on the open than they had on the whole of last week. And that pushes the market down. And it pushed the market down quite swiftly to my big support level. And of course, we've now reversed that. We've reversed it, we filled the gap, we've gone through the, uh, the Fibonacci resistance levels. And I think that this is gonna power up. I'm, uh, you know, I feel that this, the Dow Jones is going to 32,400. 32,350, 32,450, I would say. So I think we've got at least another thousand points to go for the Dow until we get to the next level. Whether we reverse from there, we could do. As I say, longer term, I think stock, stock markets are going down. I think, they, I think this is only the beginning of the crash. But um, we're going to have to review that when we get to 32 and a half and see what, what I think will happen next. So stay tuned for that too. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see that next week. So hopefully, this time next week, I'll be talking about what we should do next, uh, having hit that target. Okay, if you're not a subscriber, quick plug. This is my website, daytradeideas.co.uk. Uh, you can have a look at the products that I, the, the, the subscriptions that I offer. If you like the analysis, if you want to get involved, if you want to have a daily email, a daily update, trade, uh, trade ideas and signals from me, delivered by four or five AM GMT. So very early before most of you wake up, I like to get it out there for you. So you can wake up and put your orders in as you eat your cornflakes. If you go to my um, uh, menu page, ooh, not sure why that's shrunk, I'll have to deal with that. But um, there's lots going on, blog, tons of education on there. Uh, loads of free stuff, have a look. Uh, go to the free mentor session if you want to have a chat with me and that will bring up a little uh, page for you to book a chat, whether you're a subscriber or if you're not a subscriber, if you want some help, whether that be with your technical analysis, with trying to generate your own signals or just discipline problems that you're having with your trading, then come and have a chat with me. It's all free, book a session and we'll have a chat. It will be lovely to meet you. I'll drop that uh, link in the box below as well so don't worry if you didn't if you didn't catch it i know i talk quickly i try to get as much information into these 30 minutes as i possibly can now dow jones right stock markets the dax the european markets i'm going to have a look at the dax and the FTSE. these were a lot weaker and we saw the dax tumble during the week and break a really important support level which it has now bounced back up to as resistance now i must admit i'm finding it harder to read this the stock markets in the US are, are, are easier to read. Actually, the FTSE is easier to read than the DAX. Look, we broke down through good support levels at 13 to 250, 13, 150, and then we roared back. So I think that 13, uh, sort of 200, 300 area is going to be important for the DAX. Where did we get to? 13, 200, wasn't it? Yeah. So we've, we've hit the resistance level. This chart is a mess, though, and I don't feel very comfortable with it. FTSE, however, has been an absolute beauty. Uh, the levels are just working love, you know, beautifully. We, we had that triple top, maybe even a quadruple top, where I said to you that the FTSE is going to plunge, and wow, it really did plunge straight to the first target of 71.22. We bounced off there beautifully, but then we got this massive bearish engulfing candle. I mean, look how well the levels are working. Uh, the triple top was the sell signal. We plunged a, you know, a, an enormous amount down to the 23.6% fib. I said that that's where we should take profit. Bounce straight to the 200-day moving average and this trend line, which was a clear resistance level, and then we plunged straight through, massive bearish engulfing candle, straight through the 71.20 level, and straight to the major support, which was down at, there we go. I'm gonna put this on a weekly chart. Weekly, weekly, weekly. There we go. Uh, real nice big support level. Let me try and line this up so you can actually see it. Uh, here we go. Okay, a beauty. Um, taking the COVID crash low from 2020, early 2020, which you can't see, so I'll scrunch that up again. There you go, now you can. 47.33, the, the FTSE really took a right old beating. And then we rallied up, triple top, as you can see, still on that weekly chart. I'll open it up. And then the first support level, the first big support level, at least on the weekly chart anyway, the 23.6% FIB from that whole rally up, 69.43, coupled with the 200 week moving average and the 100 week moving average just slowly rising to lend extra support there. 69.13, we didn't get down that far. Oh, we did, we got to 69.10. So we, we touched the, uh, we kissed the 200 week moving average and bounced off that. We, we um, nicely bounced off the 23.6% fib, which is exactly what was supposed to happen. 
I'm pretty sure I covered that last week in, in the weekly webinar. Or, or did I just focus on the US markets? Anyway, either way, beautiful support level. And that just tied in so nicely with those big support levels in the US markets. You know, this, the stock markets just had to bounce. And of course they have. And uh, we, even got a, we even got a potential second opportunity, didn't we, on this dip to 69.37 on Thursday. Uh, not quite a double bottom, but it retested the support level. And if you got in Friday, you were really, really laughing. You were looking at 200 and nearly, well, uh, 240 points 230 points something like that rally absolute beauty and and it was so easy it was just so obvious from all the technicals on there now i do this you know i don't know how long you have but i have i do this for three or four hours a day figuring all this stuff out and, and i and i do that to kind of save you the time and because i've been doing it for 35 years you know it's, it's quite easy for me to spot these kind of things but when i show you it must be obvious to you too I mean, this is so clear Okay, I'm going to finish off by looking at some short-term charts. I talked about how I don't like these sideways markets, up up for a day or two, down for a day or two. I, I can't trade these. I don't like sitting in front of the screen and looking at those kind of markets. But if you are a scalper and if you do enjoy doing that, then moving averages can really, really help you. Uh, where are we now? Okay, now when, you, when I break this down to an hourly chart for the, uh, for the Aussie dollar, let's just go back a bit. Where should we go back as far as... That'll do, that'll do. Right, I've gone quite a way back. I'll open this chart up and we're just going to go through it. This, is, this won't take long and, and it's just dead simple. You may know about this. It's not, it's not you know, it's no huge secret. But I, the, the moving averages that I use are the 50, the 100, the 200 and the 500 period. I use that on the hourly, the four hourly, the daily, the weekly, the monthly chart. At whatever time period I'm looking at, I just use them. Now, I used to use shorter term moving averages and there's nothing wrong with that. If you're using the 20 day or the 21 day or whatever it is, you know, I, I would fully agree with that. They do work and it might work for what you do. But for me, um, I have to have a sort of one size fits all because I cover like 21, 22 markets. And because I've got only got three hours a day to cover those markets, I really have to have, I, I can't tweak each, each currency pair or each stock market or each commodity with different um, moving averages or different parameters on, on things. So I have to really just be able to, I've got 10 minutes to look at a market really decide what's going on, figure out you know, where the big support and resistance levels are, get them down in the report, get them down on my cheat sheet. I don't have time to be looking at mm, 20 day, what's that crossed over? So, uh, so what, I, uh, what I found after doing this for 15 years uh, works. And it's very simple. And, and by the way, I do have a course where I teach it all. You can see that on my website too. Now, uh, where are we? So when this market does start to trend, moving averages are no good in the short term markets when they're just trading sideways. But um, what, is, what is trading trading sideways on a daily uh, chart is not necessarily something that's trading sideways on, a, on an hourly chart. Now, if you're in this and you're, and you're looking at the red 200 hour moving average, you, this, this can usually give you some quite good entry points. I'm pretty sure it's a 200. Where are we now? Okay, when we do start to move, where am I on this? Okay, here we go. When we do start to move, the, the 100 and the 200 uh, hour moving averages can do a really good job of, of support and resistance level. You saw on the daily chart how things were moving sideways, but, but in the short term, when you're, when you're looking at it over a day period, for example here, there are opportunities. You know, look, this was two or three opportunities to jump into a long position just as the market turned and started trending higher. Here, long, you know, a long position would have worked. I'm only talking for scalpers. What do you, and even if you do get in, what are you looking at? 70.55 up to... 71.20. Oh, okay. Look, that's not bad. That's a potential 60 pip scalp uh, if you were to get get on these moves. So it is worth it if you're if you're in there. Look, imagine if you've got one, two, three uh, scalping opportunities with a 60 pip on each. That would have been 180 pips over a day and a half. You'd have been doing all right. Here you'd have been stopped out, but the 200 hour moving average did catch that move. Okay, where are we here? Again, some scalping opportunities at the 100 hour moving average. And then the market starts to turn. So this is where you get caught out. This, this is where it doesn't work for me because that's where I'll get chopped up. So you have to really be able to take the 60 pip moves so that when you get stopped out on the 30 pip moves, you don't lose so much. So you really do have to be careful with that. Anyway, then, and then of course, the 100 just starts to work again eventually. But what I'm saying to you is look at your market. So I don't know what you trade. Maybe it's the euro versus the US dollar. Actually, let's have a look at that. Now the blue 100 not really working so well here. This was a very steep fall. This climb here would have you would have caught some real nice moves 
using the 100 uh, hour moving average as a support level, but then you get chopped up when things turn sideways. So this is the problem. You've got to quickly identify when the market is probably trading sideways. But I tell you what, let's just have a look at the four hour. You never know what might be going on there. Four hours worth a look. It, it'll give you less opportunities because, of course, it's a longer term chart. So the moving averages won't get hit so much. But they might, it might just give you some more reliable signals. Let's just have a look. Well, the four hour would have probably worked a little, would have worked, sorry, the one hour chart, the one hour moving average on the four hour chart would have worked a little bit here, but not so well there. The 200 looks like it's doing, doing a great job, actually. The 200 period moving average on the four hour chart looks like it's doing a much better job. Yeah, it is, look, of being a, a resistance level and a support level. So that's the red one. You'd have got in, maybe got into some short positions here, maybe got into some long positions here. Uh, I don't know. Can't be sure. That, that would have been tricky because you probably would have been stopped out. A short position here would have worked. And then as we really get into the sideways trading action, well, this would have offered you some support, this red um, 200 period moving average on the four hour chart and certainly would have worked as resistance here. So look, it's just something to play with. I don't know which markets you're looking at, uh, commodities, stock markets, uh, but, but it's worth looking at the four hour and the one hour and just seeing if those period moving averages work for you and if they're reliable enough or combine them with the Fibonacci, combine them with the trend lines and see if they do work. Okay, I've got 31 minutes on the clock. I think I've said everything I want to say. Uh, go and have a look at my website. Um, when you get there, there will be a questionnaire that will pop up. It will ask you, I think, something like eight questions. They're just true or false, yes or no questions. Daytradeideas.co.uk. If you haven't been there, have a look fill in the form uh, and that will get sent to me and then I'll have an idea of the, of, of the difficulties that you're having with your trading and then I'll get in touch with you. We'll have a little chat and I'll try and help you out. It's all for free. Um, you, I will also send you some of my analysis to see if it helps you. Have a look in the description box. I'm going to put a load of links in there that I promised you and I think that's it. Uh, join me next week. Please, please give me a like if you've enjoyed it and please do share. Please do subscribe.